Okay, now we'll differentiate the inverse secant function, and this one's a little bit trickier. So here's the problem. Y is the inverse secant of X. Find the derivative. So here's what we do. Let's start by taking the secant of each side. So we get the secant of Y equals X, and then we differentiate this implicitly. The derivative of the secant function is the secant times the tangent. So this is secant y tangent y times y primed by the chain rule equals 1. Then we solve this algebraically for y primed. So y primed is 1 over secant y tangent y. And then we use a trig identity. And here's the identity that works in this case. 1 plus tangent squared y equals secant squared y. So let's take this little equation here, which is a known trig identity, and solve it for tangent y. So tangent y is the square root of secant squared y minus 1. And let's substitute that in right there for tangent y. And so y primed, the derivative that we're looking for, becomes 1 over secant y. And secant y, remember, is just x. So let's go ahead and write it as x times tangent y, which is this. That's the square root of secant squared y minus 1. And again, this secant squared y, look right here. That's secant y squared and secant y is just x. So y is or y primed is 1 over x times the square root of x squared minus 1. Okay now the problem here is there's really a plus or minus in here. Uh, when we square root this we really get a plus or minus so what about the plus or minus? That's our, our question here. And this is the tricky part. Okay, what about the plus minus? And to, to think about this, look at the graph. Remember what the secant function looks like. The secant function is the reciprocal of the cosine function. So the, the cosine function, remember, looks like this. Okay. So the secant function is going to look like this. We're going to have a asymptote here and here. Okay, that's the secant function. So I'm going to erase the, the cosine function here. Okay, that's our function secant x. So what's the, the inverse secant function? What does that look like? That's the function we're really concerned with here, differentiating the inverse secant function. Well, we take the, the line y equals x, which is right here, and we reflect our secant function across that line, and we get a curve that looks like this. Okay, But that's not how the inverse secant function is graphed, because if you look at this this, this curve that I just drew right here, it's not a function. You can see it fails the vertical line test. So what we, what we do is we take this branch down here and take another section of the curve. So let me erase that. And the inverse secant function is typically plotted like this. And your calculator may actually get that wrong. Some, some do uh, do it better than others. But if you graph the inverse secant function, it may not look like this. But what I've drawn in yellow here is the standard graph of the inverse secant function. Now, you might notice, if you think about this graph that I just drew, the one in yellow here, that one, the slope of that is always positive. So look here, this, this is a very shallow slope, but it's positive and it's positive and it's positive and so on and then over here on this branch the slope is always positive it's getting very shallow as we go way out to the right here but it's positive the entire time 
so the slope is always positive. So we have to choose our plus or minus such that it comes out positive. This, the derivative, y primed, this must be positive. So let me just take a note of that. The slope of the inverse secant of x is always positive. So y primed, this thing has to always be positive. Now there's an easy way to do that. You could look at this and say, okay, whenever, uh, whenever x is positive, then we use the plus here, and whenever x is negative, then we use the, the minus here, the little plus or minus. We choose the option to make this always come out to be a positive number. But there's an easier shortcut for that, and that's to use an absolute value sign and we typically write y primed is 1 over the absolute value of x times the square root of x squared minus 1. And if you look, this is always going to be positive. In fact, the, the radical here without any plus or minus sign implies positive. And you can see that x squared is always going to be a number uh, out here. x is always going to be greater than 1 or less than negative 1. So x squared will be greater than 1, so this number will always be positive. So the only thing that could make it negative is, is this x right here, because 1, of course, is always positive. So we can just put absolute value signs around that x and guarantee that this expression will always be positive. And so that, that is how it's commonly written. The derivative of the inverse secant function is 1 over the absolute value of x times the square root of x squared minus 1.